everyone, today I'm going to be speaking to you about the books I bought this winter. I know for a lot of you watching that it will have just been summer, but here it is still winter and it is still very, very cold. <laughs> I've never done a proper book haul video before, mostly because I never ever buy enough books in the space of a month to constitute doing a book haul. Um, I never have enough time to read all the books that I want in a month. But because my modernism course this semester was quite heavy with books um, and I had my mid-year holidays and I wanted to do a bit of reading then and there's also been some releases, um, I actually have enough books to do one for the season of winter. So the very first book goes without saying, Cursed Child. <laughs> I pre-ordered this back in February and I went to the release day, I wore my house scarf, I did the entire thing and since then I've only read 60 pages. I feel so crappy about it. Like it, it's Harry Potter, you guys know how much I love Harry Potter. And the reason is that I don't want to read it in snippets, I just want to sit down and I want to binge read it and I just want to properly enjoy it and I've not had a single day that I haven't been swamped with homework in the last like few months. But yeah, I just, it's kind of surreal holding a Harry Potter book and getting to read it as an adult because when I read the last Harry Potter book, I was like 11 or 12 um, and it was such a long time ago. So in order to do Harry Potter justice, I want to be able to just sit down and read this properly. That day will come. Eventually my holidays will come and I will be able to actually enjoy this. So second book, continuing with the Harry Potter theme, I am very late to this train. No pun intended, I know there's a train on the front cover, but when this came out and it was getting heaps and heaps of hype on booktube, I was moving house and all of my books were getting packed up and stored away so I didn't really have the capability to buy this beautiful but massive book. The illustrations are absolutely beautiful. They are phenomenal. They are just crazy amazing and I'm so glad what they've done with this. But I haven't had time to finish this yet. I wanted to read it before I read Cursed Child. Um, neither of which have worked out very well um, because of my workload with uni. But oh well. The third book I also got during my mid-year holidays. I've read about half of it and it is A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. I love space. It's one of those things that I just really, really nerd out about. I absolutely love like learning about stars and planets and black holes and everything. And I watched A Theory of Everything and it was really, really good. And it was talking about this book, so I went out and bought it. It's really, really witty. There are parts that are quite humorous. He makes relatively complex things rather tangible for the everyday person. Um, I'm excited to finish this. The fourth book isn't really like a reading book, it's a book on haikus. Because I'm studying Japanese, I thought that this would be a really good learning resource, mostly because the poems, I don't know if you can see it, but the poems um, have the romanji, the English, the kanji, and the hiragana versions in them. So it's really, really good for reading for learning, you can place where all of the words are, and it's just really beautiful to read. I, I love these, there are so many that are really, really focused on nature, and it's just... I think if I owned a coffee table, it would be a good coffee table book. Uh, the next series of books I bought uh, are for my modernism class. The very first book from that, and the fifth book is T.S. Eliot, The Wasteland and Other Poems. This will be the first time I've actually analysed The Wasteland, I've analysed a lot of his other poetry. I love T.S. Eliot so much. The writing is just so beautiful and it's, there's so much allegory and it's like, reading T.S. Eliot is like a treasure hunt for references and technique and it's just beautiful. I read this whole edition on the train to university, it's a really quick read. The next and my second favourite modernist author is Virginia Woolf, the book is To the Lighthouse. I haven't read this before, I'm about maybe halfway through it, two thirds of the way through it and I'm really enjoying it. Virginia Woolf's writing is beautiful again, much like T.S. Eliot's. The way she uses stream of consciousness in this novel is awesome. 
So yeah, excited to finish this one. However, my reading has been slowed down quite a bit by the next book, which is James Joyce's A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. This is a very dense book. A very, very dense book. Joyce is one of the major pillars of modernism. His writing is, as I said, very dense. It's a very, very stream of consciousness. There is a lot of allegory and liturgy and a lot of technique in this book. Um, basically, if you don't know a crap ton of Irish politics and history, um, you're going to be spending a lot of time flicking to the references at the end to work out what's going on. So yeah, this took ages to read and it's not like a big book, it's a very, it's a reasonably small book, but it was just so dense. It's not quite Dickens dense. Wait, Dickens is just boring. I'm not a fan of Dickens, I'm really not. I think I've criticised Dickens in like almost every one of my videos. But I love the book though, it's beautifully written. The eighth book is this one. It is Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis. Um, if you've read Metamorphosis, you know it's a very, very short, short story. But this version has a lot of his other short stories as well. Metamorphosis probably took me like an hour to read, give or take a bit, I can't really remember. But it's very, very short. I just love this version of the book. Um, it has these beautiful illustrations on the front and the back and on the inside covers. And aesthetically, it's a really, really beautiful book. Metamorphosis, however, is a strange, strange story. I wasn't expecting it, and I didn't know that it was going to be so bleak. It's very bleak. <laughs> it's kind of depressing to read. Um, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was interesting to read, but it probably wasn't my favourite uh, thing I've read from the course so far. And the last book, the ninth book, is As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. Um, I already had a copy of this, I inherited it, but it was really, really old and I didn't want to cut it back and forth to university or write notes on it or doggy the pages or whatever. So I just got a stock standard version of it. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. We briefly touched on it in my gothic course, my gothic literature course last year, um, because this also kind of falls into the bracket of gothic in addition to modernism. But yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's really, really cool. So yeah, those are all of the books I bought between June and August. Um, <laughs> obviously I haven't had time to read all of them or finish all of them. Most of the ones I have finished I really really enjoyed, um, with that small exception of Metamorphosis, which I did enjoy but I... Oh, it was so bleak. It was just so, so depressing. So yeah, let me know what you read over winter or summer, depending on the hemisphere that you're from. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a lovely day.